Hi, this is Neil here from the Dirt Floor Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how the gear, gear cutter is, is it, all the parts of the gear cutter. Now, now, wh when I was when I was designing this, I was thinking that there's all bits. This bit's going to be turning inside this bit, and this bit's going to be turning inside this bit. And my poor little brain's rattling around. I didn't know what I was going to do, but anyway, I started on it, and then it wasn't all that difficult. Now, the first part is the base, which is just simply a tube on a bit of plate. Now, after you've welded that. After you've welded that along there, it'll probably bend the plate, so you'd have to machine the, that under there flat again. And that... Now the next part is just simply a piece of round steel. I've got this machined in here for an International 40. I've got a hole all the way through it and I've got these 40 teeth cut on here to for the indexing device. But I wouldn't do it like that again next time. I'd use the Harold Hall method. If you, if you look on, on, on YouTube you'll see Harold Hall making a indexing it and it's just simply, he's just simply got a, a straight gear and he puts the he puts the pinion at a slight angle which is a better idea than this. Anyway, that goes in here. Like that. Now, when you make this, when I made this, I had this piece coming down here like that to match that side. But that you don't need that because the piece that runs along here needs clearance, so I had to cut that out. So don't put that piece along the side there. Forget about that. Just if you want to have any any extra, have it on this side, not over this side. Now these pieces here, I just machined that on my lathe and this is just a piece of flat bar. I, I cut that shape out across there and then I put a, bent a piece of flat bar around there, around there and welded that up there. That's how I made that. But there's probably, probably a lot of ways you can, oh, what am I doing? Now this is the indexing unit. It's the same sort of deal. Just got a couple of bronze bushes in there. 
a gear, I've got a 60 tooth gear here, welded on here. Now, whichever, whichever DP you choose to make this out of, you, you need to use the same DP on your rack as your gearing so that you can work out your ratios. Now these parts here, these parts here, as I bought these. I bought this because it's a lot easier to buy this than make it. I could have made it. All these indexing, all these indexing parts are all bought. This this pinion I had to make, I had to make that to match my the the gears that I've got on my on that shaft. This piece comes with a well-known Taiwanese brand indexing head. Now that piece goes in there and that goes This just goes together exactly the same way as it does on the indexing head. Now when I did this, this was created by putting half a packet of electrodes on there and then machining it. That's way too difficult. That's not, this is not the way to go. The best way to, the best way to do it will be just put a couple of brackets and put your put your pinion on at a at an angle just like as as, as just like Harold Hall does on his videos that slips on there like that and that that length from there that length from there to the shoulder needs to be just a couple of thou longer than that distance there. So that you can, when it's, when you put this, when you put this in and tighten it up, it still, it still turns. Now, now it takes a bit of mucking around to get this adjustment right so that there's absolutely no backlash in it. And I'm not going to do that on camera because it takes a little bit of time and patience. So I'll just set it up, I'll just do it roughly. Now, the, when I bought this, uh, when I bought these, I got these three indexing plates, uh, that part there, and that made it a lot easier for me to.
Now these sec sector arms, of course, they came with the with the uh, plate. Now this piece, this piece that carries the, um, this piece here, there's nothing complicated about that, it's just a straight piece of tube with a couple of bronze bushes in the end, you don't even need them if you, uh, if you don't need to, if, you, if you're not worried about it, that. Now, through the middle of that, we've just got a shaft. It's got a keyway on each end, and that simply goes through there. got a spacer at this end here, a keyway and the gear goes on next. On this end the other gear goes And when you tighten these nuts, that makes sure. That makes sure that there's no play. Now, you slide this across here.
getting this getting this adjustment right here is not so that there's no no play is not easy but with a bit of patience you can do that Be because this is adjustable here you can always take all the play out of that the indexing head you can take all the play out of that and this here is held down by a spring this spring holds that into the rack so there's no play there so there's no play there you can take all the play out of there and there and you end up with very little very very little backlash in the whole contraption now I showed you before in the in the last video I showed you how the how I I made up a International 40 to put my blanks on but obviously you'll have to make up a number of different dimensions there if you've got different size gears but if you've got a shaper about this size an International 40 is Something about this size with an international 40 is probably about the right. And I've got a drawbar which goes in from the end here. I think that's just about all the bits that go into it. Now, Make sure you have a look at my other video, Shape of Gear Cutting, where I demonstrated in, in use. So that's just about it for today. Thanks very much.